Cataract surgery today actually necessitates that the anterior segment surgeon be well equipped with the pass planner approach, be it to perform either a pass planner anterior vitrectomy, be it for the introduction of the infusion through the pars plana while performing a SFIOL, or perhaps for just the introduction of an endoilluminator into the posterior segment to aid in visibility while performing a phacoemulsification in a patient with a corneal opacity. A typical pars plana approach that is for performing either a pars plana vitrectomy or a pars plana anterior vitrectomy involves the creation of incisions. These incisions, as the name suggests, are created in the pars plana. This is another representation of the pars plana. The pars plana, also called the orbicularis ciliaris, is the flattened part of the ciliary body. It is approximately 4 mm long and ends posteriorly in the ora serrata. It is well worth noting that in the human eye, the temporal retina is longer than the nasal retina. That's because the measurement takes place from the borders of the optic disc and the optic disc is oriented nasally. Moreover, it's also worth noting that the temporal ora serrata is longer than the nasal ora serrata. Let's now move to understanding the instrumentation required. We do now know that the pars plana vitrectomy requires the creation of incisions. The three incisions create a port for further instrumentation. Now these incisions could be made either with an MBR blade or a trocar cannula system. Now for a 20 gauge vitrectomy, the only option is using a 20 gauge MBR blade and these incisions always need to be sutured. The ports for a 23 gauge pars plana vitrectomy are created with either a 23 gauge MBR blade or a trocar cannula system. As you go smaller, that is with a 25 or a 27 gauge, the ports are only exclusively made with the help of a Choka cannula system. Now these ports, the 23, the 25 and the 27 gauge ports are self-sealing and do not require suturing. Vitrectomy using a 23 gauge and smaller constitutes a micro-incisional vitrectomy surgery. Let's now understand the Choka cannula system. The trocar cannula system makes a pathway into the eye and leaves behind a cannula which serves to protect the integrity of the sclera and the retina. It also serves to protect the subincisional retina from breaks by avoiding any inadvertent vitreous prolapse. Now, please note that the current systems that are available are almost always valved. These valve systems allow for the optimal maintenance of intraocular pressure because they avoid an unnecessary egress of gas or fluid from within the eye. They also avoid fluctuations in intraocular pressure when the instruments are introduced and removed from the eye. And finally, do not require any specific plugs to keep them closed or any specific instrumentation to remove them. Let's look at the position of these incisions. The infusion is usually introduced through a port made in the inferior temporal plane. Why inferior temporal? Because if you were to place it inferior nasally, the nasal bridge would come in the way, making the instrumentation a bit awkward. The other two ports are created both superior temporally as well as superior nasally, and they house either the cutter or the light pipe, and these are switched between nasal and temporal to access target tissue. Let's finally move to the surgery itself. Let's now look at the orientation while the troca cannula system makes its entry. To start with, you need an angle of about 30 degrees with the surface at the point of entry. Once engaged, the direction is turned so as to make the troca cannula system perpendicular to the globe and directed towards the imaginary optic nerve head. This is a surgery in a patient who is going to undergo phacoemulsification and a silicon oil removal. Being a phacic eye, the surgeon marks the 4 mm mark posterior to the limbus inferotemporally for the placement of the troca cannula system that houses the infusion. As you can see, the troca cannula is introduced into the eye 4 mm behind. The troca is removed, leaving the cannula in its place. The posterior end of the troca gives you the marking of 3.5 or 4 mm to decide what is the correct position. The infusion cannula is primed as you can see. It is then turned off and whilst stabilizing the cannula, the infusion is connected to the infusion port. 
The surgeon now proceeds to making the two superior ports. Please note how the posterior end of the troca serves as a guide to decide the point of entry. At the proposed point of entry, the conjunctive is retracted before the troca is introduced into the eye. And now the introduction of the third port. Stabilizing the eye is important, marking the 4 millimeters, moving the conjunctiva away and please note how the entry is initially tangential and then the direction is turned as though to be directed towards the posterior pole. This now completes the creation of the three ports using the troca cannula system. Let's now move to understanding the technique of removal of the three ports at the end of surgery. Please note that the infusion cannula is the first in and the last out. This is the superior temporal port being removed, followed by localized pressure with the help of a cotton bud. Next, the removal of the other superior port with the help of a limb's forceps and again a bit of pressure with the cotton bud. And finally, the removal of the infusion port. In order to do so, the surgeon firmly grasps the cannula, pulls it out and applies pressure. 